What's up everybody, it's John. It's been a little more than two weeks since the first video in the 3D printed budget build series was posted and I've been busy. I've killed a lot of rolls of plastic. I think six now in total so far on the build and we've made some progress. Remember this? Well, he's all grown up now. Yo, what big boy? You're grown up. You're grown up. Because you're grown up and you're grown up and you're grown up. Let's get a look at R2 and see how much he's grown up. Right here at 9142 Props and Armory. So. How far have we gotten? Two weeks? Well, two weeks and a couple days. Pretty damn far. All right, so for those of you who are counting, we're six rolls through. At nine bucks a roll, we're at $54, plus some hardware, about 60 bucks right now so far. And let's take a look at where we're at with R2 to this point. Damn! That's a lot of printing. That's a lot of printing. R2 is now uh, been about a month of printing, almost non-stop on my CR10. Now I have original CR10, 300 by 300 by 400 high. After a month, we've got a dome, we've got a body, and we've got a whole lot of parts so far. All right, so files from this came from Mike Badley. You can get his files over on Thingiverse. I'll put a link down to those, to the version two, this one is a version 3. Now my problem with the version 3, and the only problem that I have, is an equipment problem. And that problem is this. Version 3 is designed for a print platform that is at least 500 by 500 millimeters. CR10 is 300 by 300. So, the way this was designed is so that the dome in its entirety can be printed in one go and then the body is essentially broken up into four different regions the first being right here this section here second one right here third down below here and then the fourth is the skirt so what I had to do is I took the fusion files now I got access to the full fusion files for this entire project um, on Patreon through Mike Badley's Patreon. I'll put a link down below. So if you want to get into this project, I highly recommend getting those full files. It allows you to alter things um, to your liking and to slice files up easily. What I did is I took those files, cut them up into essentially four pieces for each one of the layers so that I could fit them onto my printer and started going. Now each one of those four sections of each of the three different layers that are done so far took a day plus some of those sections took almost two days to get done so just do the math on that that's a lot of hours so far uh, all said and done I have to guess we'll be pushing close to a thousand hours of print time that's a lot of print time maybe more I really don't want to think about that yet anyway so here's where we're at now we have a body which is done with the exception of some panels and the skirt which is finishing up now so we got a lot done I did cheat a little bit though all right so I haven't used only one printer I've used my my mono price maker select my old printer with the 200 by 200 bed to print a couple of things just to move some stuff along and a lot of these are really just placeholders that I printed on there um, the radar eye surround the hollow projectors the vents and some of those other things I probably as a final version going to print some of those on my anti-cubic photon my resin printer so I get a really nice result and I got a goal in mind to get this done by I really want to get this done in time for Murph next year in the spring late winter early spring out in Indiana so that's a pretty tight deadline we're in September now that's five and a half months away gotta move things along as far as the printing goes that's where we're at printing is ongoing I'm gonna finish up the skirt 
move on to the legs, move on to some of the internal mounting structure for the legs because version three, one of the things that I like about it too is that he's got his preliminary work done for uh, the drive mechanism in there. Now R2 is seen a bunch of different ways in the films. He's seen on two legs. He's seen on three legs driving around. And then in some shots, he's shown going from a two-leg stance to a three-leg stance. And Mike has started on that process of designing the internal workings for a 232 drive on there. And that's where I probably want to go eventually. So I'm, now that I'm printing like mad, what the hell do I do to keep myself busy? Well, I could get on to post-processing. I could get on to starting to finish some of these par parts. And I may do some of that because it is September. And the weather's going to turn to crap here in Chicagoland pretty damn soon. So we're going to get going on some of that. But the other side of things we've got to do is the electronics. And there is a lot of electronics work to be done with R2. We have motion. We, so we have motors for the movement of the body. We have motion for the head. We have electronics for all the lights that are on here, these displays that are on here. All of that stuff has to be done. And all that stuff, quite honestly, gets to be really, really expensive. Now, we're going with a $500 budget. So, we're going to have to get back into something that I've always loved doing and I've been doing for a long time. Get back into a hybrid control system. So, real basically, uh, the other thing that I'm doing while I'm printing all this stuff is figuring out how the hell I'm going to make this and finish it for $500 bucks or less. Now getting R2 to move, getting the head to move, and all of that is pretty darn easy. We can do that, and we can do that just using radio control. Now some other people out there in the community, in the R2 community have made some really awesome systems. There's some really awesome control systems, some systems that allow you to control R2 with a little handheld controller that you can essentially hide in your pocket and operate it without anybody know what's going on. But the caveat to that is smaller, more specific drive for R2 is going to end up costing more in dollars and in time. So we got a time crunch, we got a budget crunch as well. So we're going to use RC controls to make R2 move. And then for the light controls, the sound controls, and then some of the animation controls of R2, we're going to use a system that's out there that is driven through an app. So we're going to run an Android or, uh, God forbid, an iPhone. I think I got a few of those sitting around. Not that they last more than 18 months, two years. Really, Apple. But I digress. So we're going to use that app based system to control those things. So we'll have a combination of the RC controls and then we'll have. A mobile device on here running that app to control the lights and the personality of R2. And I think using the two of those we can get ourselves under budget. This is one of my drone controllers that I have so I'm going to repurpose this and honestly you can pick one of these up for 40 or 50 bucks. Um, they're cheap. They work great. They work perfect for R2. So that's the other thing that I'm thinking about, and we'll get into specific parts, controls, how to get that in there, how to get that going so we can get R2 moving, and then we'll get into the app control aspect of things and the electronics and how we build those and put those together and make everything work together. So there's going to be a lot of videos, but this is where we're at right now. So I'm doing a shit ton of printing right now. So that's where we're at. R2 looks pretty badass. Look for another video here. We'll get to another part probably sometime in the next couple weeks as well. Maybe every two weeks we'll do another one just to kind of keep things on a schedule. So if you like the video, if you like the build, like what we're doing, please contribute down in the comments. Let me know your suggestions, your ideas, your thoughts. If you've built an R2 before and you want to say, hey, stupid, don't do it that way, do this. If you've got suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Use the comments down below to participate in the community. Love it when everybody does that. It keeps me motivated and keeps me going on things like this. And before I do go, I do want to say a special hello to a couple of my nephews and my niece. And my younger nephews out in Ireland definitely both watch these videos. So Michael, Christian, 
and Lucy, if you happen to be watching this too. Hey guys, miss you. Hope to see you again real soon. So enjoy the R2 and be cut next time. He'll be done. You get to play with him. So for now, it's John. It's 9142 Props and Armory. Go ahead, build something. Have an awesome time with it. Share with me what you're doing. I'm on Twitter, at John Weger, at J-O-N-W-E-G-E-R. Love to see what you're working on, what you're building. It's John. It's 9142 Props and Armory. See you real soon. I got a lot of work to do.